Uh, Grace, if you let me know when I have one minute left. I will. Um, I, I'd just like to thank the Whips Office initially for um, allowing me to speak on, on this issue. Uh, I rise to support the bill, uh, and I believe this change uh, to abolish the Shannon uh, should be made. Uh, first of all, because our political system uh, is old-fashioned and no longer fit for purpose. Uh, second, because I believe we need fewer politicians, uh, but more democracy. Uh, and third, uh, because during the last few years, uh, a lot of people uh, in this country have made very significant and painful sacrifices and are doing uh, more with less, and that should be no different uh, for those of us uh, who are politicians. It's important to see this reform in context. It's not happening on its own. Uh, it's part of the new politics agenda, which we are pursuing as a government, and which was uh, one of the points uh, in the five-point plan that we put before the people at the last election. It involves a new and reformed doll. It involves very big changes uh, in local governments that are happening at the moment, and it involves uh, more open and ethical government, which I'll touch on a little bit later on. Uh, the first thing I think that we can probably all agree, uh, or at least the evidence suggests that we should all agree, uh, is that we do not need a shadow, we do not need a second chamber. There are lots of countries and lots of democracies around the world that manage to get by uh, with one house of parliament. Uh, indeed, there are 29 European countries, including countries like Norway, Denmark and Finland, uh, countries like Hungary, countries like Luxembourg, uh, and many of the new democracies in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, that only have uh, one chamber and seem to manage uh, very well. Uh, outside of Europe, there are countries like New Zealand, uh, countries like Israel, which again uh, have unicameral parliaments, and then a lot of small countries like Ireland, small island countries, countries like Cyprus, like Iceland, uh, like Malta, uh, again, um, have single chamber parliaments. And one of the things that I do, um, and I have done, obviously holding, holding the European Presidency of the Transport Council for the last six months, is to ask other ministers in informal conversations um, how it works for them uh, when they only have one house and it works fine for them uh, none of them are contemplating uh, the introduction of a second house uh, it seems to work uh, very well in terms of parliamentary scrutiny uh, and performance the countries that do have second chambers tend to be very large countries uh, they tend to be federal countries like germany where uh, people are elected from the states uh, and not just with the direct mandate uh, from the people and in some countries it works very badly uh, in places like italy where the second chamber has almost the same power uh, as the lower house. So you have a lower house and an upper house uh, with similar powers that are then often in conflict with each other, and that makes uh, good government uh, very difficult. Um, one of the interesting things that they do in Luxembourg, for example, which I know is a very small country, but it's also a very successful country, uh, is they use the, our equivalent of the Council of State in a different way. And their equivalent of the Council of State reviews all legislation uh, as to, to see whether it's constitutional or whether it may be flawed, and that's how they achieve uh, having a second opinion uh, without um, having to uh, um, have, a, have a whole uh, institution or second chamber to do it. Uh, others break, break up their parliament uh, and have a small legislative committee uh, to, to, to carry out um, uh, that particular role. As I mentioned, this is um, part of a bigger programme of reform, a reform that will result in, in fewer politicians in the country. Uh, there'll be 600 fewer councillors um, roughly this time next year after the local elections occur. Uh, we'll have one fewer uh, member of the European Parliament. There will be eight fewer TDs from the next general election. And if this referendum is passed, there will be 60 fewer senators. And it's not that I wish to engage uh, in a cull of my colleagues, but I do think that we should bring the number of politicians in this country into line with countries of a similar size. It's wrong to compare us with America, which is very big. It's wrong to compare us with somewhere like, um, we, we'll, say, um, we'll say, Liechtenstein, which is very small, um, or perhaps San Marino would be a better example. Uh, but it is right to compare us with countries of a similar size, countries of a population of about 5 million, uh, four, four and a half to 5 million, and going to 160 members roughly uh, brings us into line with those countries. As I mentioned, it is part of a bigger reform agenda. Uh, it involves things like the big changes that are happening in local government. It involves things that are happening in terms of more open government, the effective ban uh, on, on corporate donations, the legislation to protect whistleblowers, to regulate lobbying, the changes that have been made already in terms of how we make public appointments, the fact that many ministers, including uh, uh, me, bring legislation to committees at heads of bill stage uh, already uh, before um, uh, before they are, the, the, they are drafted. Uh, it's about extending the Freedom of Information Act uh, to other bodies. Um, it's about all those reforms uh, are part of a package, and the Senate uh, abolition should be seen uh, as, part, as part of that. Um, I do know that also there are, of course, savings to be made, um, roughly 20 million a year in terms of savings, although some of those may, may need to be re reused in terms of beefing up our committee system. Um, but certainly it will mean 
um, a significant savings uh, in payroll, which are very important. Uh, now, people will often argue uh, for reform. They will say we shouldn't abolish the Shannon, um, but we should uh, reform it instead. Uh, and there's one thing I'm absolutely certain about this debate, is that there will be lots of promises of reform uh, from those who can deliver it uh, and those who can't deliver it. Um, but the reform isn't going to happen. You know, in 1979, I, I think it was 1979, it was the year I was born, a referendum was passed to reform the Shannon uh, to change the way the graduate seats are elected. It hasn't happened. Uh, I can't remember how many reports have been issued uh, about the reform uh, of the Shannon. I think 10, 20, um, 15, uh, I think is the correct figure. Um, and again, it hasn't happened. And the question you have to ask uh, is why hasn't it happened? And the reason why it hasn't happened is because there is no consensus around what a reformed Shannon should look like. Some people want it to be directly elected. Uh, which would mean that it would effectively be in competition with the doll, it would be a, a mini doll or another doll. Other want it to be undemocratic, to be indire indirectly elected um, as it is now. Uh, some people want votes for emigrants, some people don't. Some people want votes for people in Northern Ireland, uh, other people don't. Some people want a sort of uh, elite Shannon made up of experts and the great and the good and, uh, and people who are so great and good that they don't think they should have to run for election. Um, and that's one model. Uh, an alternative model is a more sectoral Shannon uh, representing interest groups um, and in many ways that that, that 1930s vocationalist um, uh, um, sit, uh, system of Shannon we have now in theory is supposed to do that with an administrative panel, a labour panel, an industrial commercial panel but I think that idea is very outmoded and where do people like the self-employed for example fit into that? Um, sole traders, um, people who don't consider themselves to be part of any uh, particular interest group, the people who just consider themselves to be uh, citizens who pay their taxes and obey the law and don't want to be put into some panel uh, or some section. Um, and th that's, that's one system of reform. Uh, another is, is a sort of citizens' assembly, whereby people are there um, largely by virtue of being part of some sort of demographic group, whether it's because they're young, because they're old, uh, because they're a certain gender, uh, because they have a certain uh, ethnic background or sexual uh, orientation, for example. And that sort of citizens' assembly uh, may have some value uh, in, in, uh, for, for doing other things. But I think as a parliament it would be wrong that people should be uh, in, in a parliament um, just because of their demographic group that they're part of or just because of their background and not because of their abilities or their contents of, the, of their character. And to me that's equality by subgroup rather than equality of opportunity for the individual, uh, which is what we should be offering. Uh, anyone who wants to run for parliament uh, should be enabled to do so. Everyone should have one vote for parliament. Uh, and it shouldn't matter uh, what panel you're on or, 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 what, or, what, or what university you went to or whether you went to university at all. And the other reform models uh, suggest what I call the buffet option, uh, which is a standard made up of a bit of everything. Um, and, uh, and again, I, I think really that's the worst of all parts rather than the best of all parts. Um, I know that, uh, in fairness to Senators Quinn and Zaboni, that they've put forward uh, a good effort um, to reform the Shannon. Maybe it's as good an effort as can be put forward, um, but it's also pretty flawed if you look at it. Uh, what they suggest, for example, is that the Shannon should have, the ro have a role in, in scrutinising statutory instruments, secondary legislation, something that this Oireachtas has been very poor at doing uh, down the years. Um, there's nothing stopping the Shannon doing that now if they wanted to. If they're interested in it, they could change their standing orders and allow them to scrutinise statutory instruments. And indeed, there was a statutory instruments committee of the Shannon uh, up until 1981, uh, but it stopped functioning for some reason. Uh, it's also been suggested that the Shannon could be used to scrutinise EU legislation. That's what a functioning EU committee of this parliament uh, and this doll should be doing. Uh, the same thing applies to, to public appointments, which are now already scrutinised uh, uh, by, um, uh, 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 by committees. Um, and they also want to retain the graduate seats, which I think is wrong. I don't think we should separate uh, people who have a degree from people who don't. Uh, they want to retain the existing panels <coughs> of culture and industry. Uh, they want to retain uh, appointed members. Um, and they also propose uh, a, um, a degree of demographic graphic quotas for outcome, which is very different, I think, to having quotas for candidates, uh, which is, of course, uh, a very different concept because it gives people um, a clear choice. I just mentioned two things that, that uh, Deputy Cueve uh, mentioned. Uh, he mentioned the guillotine. Um, as Minister for two and a half years now, at least to my recollection, I've never used uh, the guillotine. Uh, but sometimes it is needed. Sometimes it's needed because a decision has to be made uh, against a certain time frame. Uh, or sometimes uh, people will filibuster. They will put down huge numbers of amendments um, and will talk forever just to prevent uh, a decision being made uh, by the elected members um, of this House. And that's why it is necessary sometimes. Um, I do think it makes a good argument in relation to it being um, 
um, having to have a qualified majority, if you like, uh, uh, to, to end a debate in that way, or at least after a period of time. Uh, although that wouldn't get around the issue, for example, of filibuster. Uh, and secondly, I think it probably could be done through standing orders and not just um, uh, by constitution, but I, I, I may be incorrect on that. Um, he also spoke about the role of committees and what he said, and I hope it isn't true, but he said really was, was a terrible indictment on, 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 on TDs and senators. He said that uh, roughly one third are poor attenders, uh, one third are poor contributors, uh, leaving one third of people uh, to do all the work at committee. Well, that's not good enough. You know, that's an argument for, for, for a better doll uh, and better TDs. Uh, you don't create a whole institution uh, because one third of people aren't turning up or one third of people aren't doing a good job. Uh, that's, that's not an argument at all for having a Shannon. That's an argument for better TDs and a properly reformed uh, doll, uh, and we don't need a Shannon in that context.